Good morning. Welcome to the Reject Rundown Podcast. You are chilling with me, Tony the Kid. Got some good stuff to discuss today with you guys. Uh, but first, as always, parental advisory is advised. Just in case if I say some vulgar material, I apologize. Pray advance. Okay? <laughs> All right, guys. Now, first things first. Looks like Patty Jenkins, the director who made Wonder Woman, has been the tag team partner with Gail Godot in the success of Wonder Woman in the movie biz, has stepped away from Cleopatra, upcoming movie with her again, tag teaming with uh, Gail Godot. So I guess the whole thesis behind all this is because she wanted to focus more solely on Wonder Woman 3. That's coming up very shortly. And I guess things got a little hectic, a little stressful possibly. But I don't know, everybody. It's a little questionable to me just because part two of Wonder Woman wasn't really that successful as what they thought it would be. Everyone was really hyped to see it, yes, because we were going to see Gal Gadot reprising the role as Wonder Woman. And we kind of liked the idea of continuing her to play this character just because it fits. You know, she's done done really good being Wonder Woman um, in this DC, you know, butchery of films that's come out recently. God knowing who, what's in order, whatever case may be. But, you know, she's done well. Like, at this moment, you know, she's like Chris Evans to Captain America. Uh, Scarlett Johansson to Black Widow. So it's in that ballpark. You know, she's played this character to the best of her ability. I was very questionable when she just stepped on, but she's done really great. Okay? Now, Patty Jenkins stepping away from this Cleopatra film tells me that she possibly could be having some, you know, connection issues with Gal Gadot. I think that's the case. I think right now things are a little tense with them too, and I just, um, I don't know, it's very questionable, okay? So, it, because this tells, you know, this also indicates that Wonder Woman 3 is under pressure, okay? Since 2 wasn't that great, 1 was, you know, fairly decent, fairly good, if we have to say, and it, people are expected more coming up, especially with this new project of Wonder Woman. So, I think that's the case. I think the pressure's on to her. I think that's why she may have stepped away from Cleopatra, because she needed to focus. So, and I give it to her. In all sense, you know, you just got to respect what a director has to do. Yeah, other news, we got, you know, Charlie Cox. All right, everybody, Daredevil. Netflix is Daredevil. Definitely is coming back in the MCU, confirmed by Kevin Feige, which is great. Thank you very much because everyone was excited for this news and everyone wanted him to return as uh, Daredevil, and especially in the upcoming Spider-Man No Way Home. Okay, so this also tells me that we're going to get some more news pertaining to the other characters that came in on Netflix. You know what I mean? It, it, we all appreciate Netflix is a Marvel role in this, okay? And they actually did really well with everyone. I appreciate the two, I think if I'm not mistaken, maybe three seasons, depending on which character they portrayed. But everyone did a fantastic job. Punisher, the first two, the, the two seasons there, that was awesome. I cannot wait for them to see them in movie theaters if this is the case. I don't think Disney Plus is going to carry any of their material, but Hulu sure can. They're more; These guys are more of a dark role, and this is why I think Netflix was the perfect place for them because you had to be a little bit more methodical, more, more intense. And a little bit more blood, let's be honest. All right? And it really did a great job. Really did fantastic with the showcases. 
um, that's why they were successful. And that's why everyone wanted them to return and possibly be on the roll for Infinity War or Endgame and stuff like that. And it's exciting. It's exciting stuff to know that Charlie Cox is going to be returning as Daredevil and possibly get an upgrade in the suit, even though the suit that he got for Daredevil was pretty fairly decent. You know what I mean? It's pretty good. And I don't think there was any complaints going in that direction. But, you know, it's nice to see it. It's nice to see it's going in a positive direction. Um, so we'll we'll kind of chime in a little bit later, but I love it. Otherwise, you guys, you just let me know which particular character you definitely want to see come back um, and which one you're yeah, maybe do you want them to recast. So we'll go from there. All right, everybody, on to other news and big stuff to discuss, everybody. M. Mike Shalaham, I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly, but, you know, the guy that's been behind uh, Split, Glass, Unbreakable, all that stuff, is casting Dave Bautista, everybody. WWE's own Dave Bautista into his new leading role, new, 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 new film coming up in the leading role called Cabin in the Woods. No. Night Cabin? I don't know. Whatever. I don't know. Staff? Staff? No? You guys don't know? All right. That's okay. Anyways, uh, the new new movie that's coming out, it's on. It's a post on Instagram, so you guys check it out there. Um, the new movie coming out, and I, hey, M. Night Shalaham has some great movies, great ideals, uh, vision-wise when it comes to the films. A lot of tur- heads and turns when it comes to the story itself. Very complicated, but cool to try try to understand. That's the best part of the films that I've seen of his. Um, and Dave Batista, let's be honest, you guys. Dave's Dave's range of acting has grown dramatically. And I think that was his key role, key idea into wanting to be the best actor he could be. You know, when The Rock jumped over to the movie biz, just like other WWE wrestlers before him, I think The Rock also, in the same sense, he wanted to be the best actor he could be in in that case. And by far, he's become the best action hero, which a lot of of the predictions when he jumped on board to be to be the next Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie biz. And I, I'm pretty sure he's met that match and exceeded beyond that just because of his business side of it. I think that's what's made him great in that part. And the Black Adam that's coming up soon from DC is really a high-anticipated film to come out in a long time. So I think that's a really big key. It's a, I think it's almost been 10 years in the making since he's been, you know, training for this Black Adam role. So it's finally come to fruition and I'm excited to see this film uh when it comes out for sure in movie theaters. It's going to be awesome. Back to Dave Batista. Dave Dave's acting career started playing Drax, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I'm not I can't remember his first particular role. But if I'm not mistaken, that was one of the roles when seeing Guardians of the Galaxy's cartoon or the comic books when they were talking about possibly, um, you know, casting roles and stuff like that. Who could they cast? I clearly thought Dave Bautista was the fit role for that guy. You know, the, the look of it, if you really put the costume onto Dave Bautista shaved his head bald, which I think at time at that time in WWE, he was already bald as it was. I was like, perfect match, go for it, bam, done, write the script, see you later. You know, it was good. But even then, when we're getting his uh, media roles and media attention and all the interviews that's coming about, he all clearly stated to everybody that his sole purpose is not just to be an action hero, not just be another The Rock or, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, Sylvester Stallone or anything like that, but to be a great actor, to be in the field of, you know, Al Pacino, you know, Harrison Ford, you got freaking Robert De Niro, you got any, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, all these great actors that's come on, on the mainstream, he wants to be in the niche with those guys, he wants to be that. Not just a muscle-bound action hero guy. 
And he's done well. He's been successful. His range of comedy is fantastic. His seriousness, walking in the room, being the behemoth that he is, is even great, especially for 007 when he came out being the villain there. Or more of the mental side of things. I think this is the big key going forward where people really want to know, does he have that range? I think he does. And in this role that's coming up with M. Night, I feel like it's going to be a challenge to him, and I feel like he's going to succeed. So Dave Batista, all the best of luck for you in this one because it's going to be going to be a great film, I'm pretty sure, and a testament to what what basically you've been doing, all the hard work that you've you know done in the movie biz thus far. All right, so congratulations there. I'm going to be excited to see that for sure. But otherwise, you guys, I think that's all I got for you guys. All the news coming probably later. For sure, it is Wednesday. Don't forget, we got our What to Watch episode coming up shortly. Going to discuss to you what you should be watching coming up. All right, you guys take it easy. Have a good day.